So, all right, so write these examples down in your notebook. I'm going to do some of the basic ones from yesterday, okay, and then show you the one that I didn't do and how we complete that. So, those of you who did number two in the workbook, that's the one I'm going to take first, just for the very basic. Um, this, this is where we started yesterday, just taking a single square root, nothing else dealing with it. What do I look for? Feel free to talk. You don't have to. Factors of 60, and one of them has to be a what? One of them has to be a perfect square. Okay, so what's the biggest perfect square that's going to go into 60? Not 25. 12 does, but 12 is not a perfect square. Some of you might want to look at your perfect square list that you put in your notebook yesterday. What's the biggest perfect square that's going to go into 60? 40 is, or, excuse me, 4 is the biggest one. Okay, so we're going to factor this to square root of 4 times the square root of 15. Okay, do you agree that square root of 4 times square root of 15 is the square root of 60? Okay, so which one can we simplify? The square root of 4. Square root of 4 is 2, and then I just keep my square root of 15. I think most of us are probably pretty good at that one. Just the single, we can break that down, find the square root. We know when to take the square root sign off now and when to have it a whole number. Okay. Um, now, when they throw something else at you, um, let's see, let's go, about something like that okay two different things we need to look at outside inside Meredith what first uh, you multiply the, two and the, four. the two and the four okay so that gives us eight all right Carl what do we do next square root is square, square root of five times the square root of five is square root, square root of 25 which we know perfect. is what perfect. a perfect square so what is the square root of 25 uh, five so this is eight times 5, which gives me an answer of 40. Okay. How about... How about that? Some of you will start to see it right away. Yesterday we broke it up into three pieces, the number, the P's, and the Q's. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing today. Again, if you're starting to see the pattern, you don't have to do this. All right, but I'm going to break down the 50 first. <coughs> Excuse me. The 50. Then I'm going to break down square root of P to the fourth. Then I'm going to break down square root of q whoop, to the second. I made a mistake there. Okay. Square root of 50. Two factors. Josh. Think money. We should see this right away. 25, 25 and? 25 and 2. Okay. So square root of 25. Square root of 2. Jacob, what does that come out to be? Okay, so 5 square roots of 2. Perfect. Now, how do we take the square root of p to the 4th power? Max. Or what is the square root of p to the 4th power? P squared. p squared. Okay. Does it have a square root bracket on it, or is it gone? Uh, it's, gone. it's gone. Okay. Um, Kim. Square root of Q squared. Q. Where's Kim? Oh, you're over there. Okay, Q. Yeah. I like your Thanks. Cool. I oh, okay, I thought you were. All right, so now we got to put it all together. Uh, Zach Thomas, what do we end up with? Uh, five P squared Q square roots of two. Okay. So we have a chance to go back and look at those. Now, here's some that are different. <coughs> okay. 
what are we square rooting in this one? Both of them. Okay, so rewrite it to the square root of 5 over the square root of 10. Now, in one of the problems yesterday, remember when I did the 3 plus and the 3 minus? I said we couldn't have a square root on the bottom. Okay, but I forgot to go over this one that had a square root on the bottom. Okay, what do you think I can multiply top and bottom by to get rid of that square root of 10? Okay, you're thinking negative. It's not a negative. It's just square root of 10. Now, some of you will say, well, yesterday it was a negative. Yesterday we had two terms. Today we just have a single term. So if we just have a single term, you multiply top and bottom by whatever's on the bottom. Okay, so I'm going to multiply top and bottom times square root of 10, and you'll see why here in just a second. Now, what is the square root of 10 over the square root of 10? 1. So again, we're multiplying a fraction by 1. We're making it look different, but we're not actually changing its value. What's the square root of 5 times the square root of 10? square root of 50 and I'm going to save a step here on the bottom because most of you are going to start noticing this what's the square root of 10 times the square root of 10 square root of 100 which is 10 okay if you multiply a square root by itself your answer will be the number that's under the square root every time square root of 25 times the square root of 25 is going to come out to be 25 square root of a thousand times the square root of a thousand is going to come out to be a thousand okay am I done no because what else can I break down I can break down the square root of 50 a little bit more that's the one we just did okay square root of 25 times the square root of 2 so I'm gonna save a little bit of time and that just comes out 5 square root of 2 over 10 okay am I done yeah. no Look at it. What do you see? 5 over 10. Okay. Remember, if numbers on the top and bottom could cancel that are outside of the square root, that's okay. We can't touch the square root. So I'm going to bring down the square root. All right. And what is 5 tenths reduced? 1 half. Okay. So I'm not going to put the 1 on the top. I'm just going to put the 2 on the bottom. You could put 1 square root of 2 over 2 if you wanted to. It doesn't make a difference. Again, don't be tempted to go, hey, that divides into there. That's just the square root of 1, which is 1. All right, I'm done. Can't divide whole numbers into square roots. Okay, Max, question. Here? from here to here okay this was my bottom term I can't have a square root on the bottom so I multiply top and bottom by whatever that is okay I'll do another one so so you'll see see a different example let's do one more those of you who worked out of the book you're getting a bonus because I'm working out of the book today um, okay how about that one? Let's rewrite it to what? Uh, square root of 8 over the square root of 6. Okay. All right. What's on the bottom? What's on the denominator? Square root of 6. Can I have a square root on the bottom? No. How do I get rid of it? Multiply top and bottom by square root of 6. What is the square root of 8 times the square root of 6? Square root of 48. What's the square root of 6 times the square root of 6? 6. Okay, remember, that's, that's the trick, just 6. Am I done? Nope. What can I break down? Square root of 48. What's the biggest number that goes in there? Ooh, bigger than 4. 16. 16 times what? Three. So this is square root of 16 times the square root of 3. Which one of those do we know? Square root of 16. So this becomes 4 
square roots of 3 all over 6. Now what? Simplify. Simplify. So 2 2 thirds okay or 2 square roots of 3 all over 3. Okay, just reducing the 4 sixths. All right, so that's what we do when we end up with a radical on the bottom. Yes, sir, Jacob. Yep, the greatest common factor. Absolutely. Okay. So that was the new thing. Some of you got to that and you weren't quite sure what you should do next. That's what you should do next. Okay. Um, I think we're good. I think we need you have specific questions. Okay. If you don't have a denominator? If you do have a denominator, but you For example. For example, 9 minus 5 squared is 5. Keep over 4. To reduce anything, they all have to have a common factor. No, but can you reduce it? Like, would you reduce it for an answer, or would you just leave it as 5? I'm answering your question. You're not listening. Do 9, 5, and 4 have a common factor? then there's no reduction. That's it. So if, if this was a 9, that was a 3, that was a 6, I could reduce those because they would have a common factor of 3. But they don't. So as long as they have a common factor, keep going. If they don't, you're done. Walk away. Tie it up, you're done. Step away from the math problem. Why do I not do the 9 minus 5? Because 5 is connected to the square root of 5. That's not 5. That's 5 square roots of 5. Okay. If it were just 9 minus 5, I could say that's 4. But it's not. All right. Huh? There won't be one. That There will always be a square root on the top. It'll. You'll never come up with something that's like 9 minus 2 on the top. There will always be a square root there. Yeah. Okay. So... Continue to work on whichever one you chose yesterday, the book work, the practice workbook page. All right. If you are done, okay, you're welcome to work on something in another class, but I will walk around and verify that you're done. So don't just tell me you're done. Don't tell me that, oh, it's at home, but it's done. Okay. I want to see it. All right.